Welcome to episode 3 in this tutorial on how to make a Pong game. In this tutorial we will make it so that two different players can control their individual paddles. I did make a mistake in the previous episode, I forgot to put package uh, semicolon up the top of the paddle class, um, which is why I um, couldn't import it here. But uh, just putting package space semicolon at the top of paddle will work fine. Um, so now... Uh, we're going to make the individual paddles know which keys should move them up and which keys should move them down. So the player on the left should be able to move up and down with the W and the S key and the player on the right should be able to move their paddle with the up and down keys. So just like we had to know the initial X and the initial Y value for the different paddles, we need to know which key should make them move up and which key should make them move down. So to do that, uh, next to your, in your new function, where you've got the x, comma, y, put another comma and write underscore up key with a lowercase u and an uppercase k, and then comma underscore down key, just like that. So now we have to specify, these will be strings, so we have to put a colon, which means this is a type of, and then capital S string. A string is basically a length of text, so it could be uh, just a single letter like A. In our case, it's going to be uh, a single letter for the key that they have to press, but it can also hold full sentences. And we have to do the same for the down key. Now, this is all fine, except our paddle needs to remember what key should move it, make it move up and down. We didn't have to make it remember the X and Y because we just had to pass it into the super method call. However, because we are going to have to know the up and down key in the update method, we will make it remember it. So to make it remember it, write there, which is short for variable, so it's something that can change and that can remember it, up key, colon string, Again, to make it know that it's remembering something that is a series of words or letters. And then right below it, there, down, key, hold on, string. Now, here, to make it remember what we passed in, write up key equals underscore up key. And down key equals underscore down key. We have to put the underscore here because if we simply put up key equals up key then it would refer to this twice and it wouldn't actually know what we passed in so it's a bit hard to explain but basically the underscore differentiates the argument from our own variable here now at any point in the class we can write up key or down key and we can think of this as almost being replaced by the value we put in when we created it. So now um, we will go back to our play state class and we will tell it, see how here we've got 30 and 200, which is telling it what the X and Y should be. Now we have to tell it what the up and down keys are. So put another comma, and to specify a string value, you have to put it in two quotation marks, like someone was speaking. That's how I remember it. It's just saying this is some words. So this is the left player. So we will use the uppercase W to make it move up, comma, and then in these quotation marks, capital S, which will make it move down. And for the right paddle, put a comma and put up or uppercase and then down. I think there's other white names for it. For the, um, they're what Hexflix refers to the up and down arrow keys as. So now in any of these paddles, we can say, for instance, if this is the left paddle, if we write up key here, it knows we are actually talking about the letter W. So now we will fill in our update method so that the paddle will actually move up and down. Something that I forgot to do in the previous episode was call super.update. This is really important to do because it will let Hexflixel 
do all of the important background things, uh, like I said in the past, like changing the colour if you've got a tween going. So go down a few lines and write if flex G, capital F, capital G, dot keys, hmm, dot keys, dot, seems like my IntelliSense isn't working, but that doesn't matter, dot any currently quest, and then this takes an argument of strings, so like, um, for instance, if W or up key is pressed, but we don't want to do that, we just want to go, if the up key is pressed, then do this, else if, do this, but with the down key. So, if the up key isn't pressed, so else, then check if this is true. And then, do that. So, uh, if the up key is pressed, then say, why uh, plus, no, minus equals 1, and semicolon, and y plus equals 1. I might have got that in the wrong order, but let's see. Uh, CD desktop, CD, you may have already done this. Lime test. Nico. You might have also noticed I'm using Windows 8. Ah, oh, right. Of course, it didn't know what Flex G was and the IntelliSense wasn't working because we forgot to write import flexl.flexg in our Paddle class. See here how we were referring to Flex G. It didn't know what it was because it hadn't imported that knowledge. Now we'll save and see if it works. And has no any current request. Right, I needed IntelliSense. Keys dot any press, that's what it's called. Any press. Just like that. And now it should run. And waiting for the compilation. Here we go. Now, oh, it works. So, W and S will move uh, the left paddle up and down. And the up key and the down key will move this paddle up and down. So, our game's working fairly well at the moment. We just need to create the ball object, which we will do in the next class. And make it bounce between the two paddles. Uh, yeah, so that's the end of this tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed.